Good morning, boys and New Hope family. I hope this message finds you all well. I hope you've all had a great day and a great week. I want to pick up our conversation where we left off last week. Uh, last week we talked about Isaiah chapter 37. We talked about Isaiah and Hezekiah and the Assyrian uh, army besieging Jerusalem. We spent a lot of time talking about Hezekiah's uh, prayer to the Lord that his name would be honored among the nations regardless of the outcome of that siege. And so we really believe that God's name will be honored at the end of the day, whether people acknowledge that he is God or not. He is still the Lord and still worthy of that honor and glory due him. And this week we want to seek a little more insight into Isaiah's relationship with God in chapters 38 and 39. Let's start off, let's just read verses 1 through 3 of chapter 38. It says, In those days Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order, because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion, and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And so here we read that Hezekiah, his heart was truly aligned with God's heart. He had put his faith in the Lord, and he had served him faithfully throughout his lifetime up to this point. And so Hezekiah is sick, and he's not going to recover. And Isaiah says, this is the end of it. Get your affairs in order. And I think Hezekiah's response is pretty natural. He just wept bitterly and says, Lord, don't you remember what I've done? Don't you remember that I've been devoted to you from the beginning? Don't you remember all the things I've did and I've done in your name and turned down the high places and preserving your name here in Jerusalem? I think Hezekiah's heart truly really just grieved that this is the end for him. And so he didn't want to die. And I think it, he simply asked God to say, Lord, don't you remember my faithfulness to you? And it seems like an obvious statement, but I think we can learn something from that. You know, I think that when... Had bad things happen and hard things come in our lives, we try and do it ourselves. I know I do. We try and do it ourselves, and we can fix it, we can make it work, and we can do that. I think we tend to think of prayer more as a last resort instead of an instinctive response to those challenges. But I think we have to be careful of that application, where we need to pray when those challenges come, but we can't pray simply thinking that because I was good, God is going to bless me and take care of me. Um, we've got to be careful of the, that we're not telling God what he should and should not do with us. And so, yes, we need to pray when those circumstances come, but we can't pray in such a way that we're demanding God do this because we've been so good to him. You know, our obedience to God shouldn't come out of legalism and shouldn't come out of a, a pretty quo quo to God. It should come simply out of our love for him because he is worthy and deserves that love. And so here Hezekiah is saying that prayer, Lord, don't you remember what I've done? Don't you remember me? And please remember me in the future. And so Hezekiah was not earning God's blessing here. He could not. And God doesn't bless us because we're good. He blesses us because he is good. And so that's an important distinction to remember as we go through this. It isn't because Hezekiah is good. It's because God is good that these things happen. So let's keep going. Let's read verses 4 through 8 next in this section. And it says this, it says, Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, Go and tell Hezekiah, This is what the Lord, the God of your father David, says, I have heard your prayers and have seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life, and you will, and I will deliver you and the city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city. This is the Lord's sign to you that the Lord will do what he has promised. I will make the shadow cast by a sun go back the ten steps it has gone down on the stairway of Ahaz. So some that went back, the ten steps had gone down. So here we have God basically telling Isaiah to deliver a different outcome to Hezekiah. Saying, look, you told him one thing, but you need to tell him something different. Because the Lord says he's lived, he will live another 15 years. And so I can imagine that was a comfort to Hezekiah to, to hear that. Um, and it sounds like this is still in the midst of this siege of Jerusalem. In verse 6, we read that the Assyrian army is still at the gate. And so Hezekiah hasn't seen that deliverance happen to Jerusalem yet when he gets this illness. And so it's just from kind of remember the timeline of the siege and when this is happening. So this is before God has struck down that 185,000 in the Assyrian army read about the end of chapter 37. So it's before that happens. 
but this, this army is still at the gate. Hezekiah is ill. Um, but this promise from God comes with a sign as well. And he says that, look, I'm going to cause the sun to move backwards 15 steps. You know, in my mind, I think it's maybe Isaiah left, and then the sun went down 15 steps, and that was going to go back those 15 steps from the time Isaiah was there. That's just speculation on my part about the timing of that, but in, it seems to be about what it looks like. 15 steps down, 15 steps back is what God has promised. And, and I've never seen that happen before, um, but time always seems to be marching forward. And I'm not a big astronomer or physicist, but if I understand physics right, if the world stops and goes backwards and gravity gets all messed up, the solar system gets messed up, and then all bad things happen. That's the extent of my knowledge of physics, is that bad things would happen if the sun was in reverse, or if the earth was in reverse for about 15 steps. Um, I think bad things would happen. And so here, God's saying, look to Hezekiah, look, I've heard your plea. I've heard your cry of your heart. I'm going to bless you with additional years. And so you know it's true. I'm going to cause the sun to move backwards. And I think not only is he causing the sun to move backwards, but God is also proving just his masterful control of the universe, that he can cause that to happen without things getting messed up and bad. And so God is really proving to Hezekiah that not only can he extend his life, but he's also proving that he is still the Lord of all things. In this little example he's given Hezekiah. And so this is an amazing and powerful miracle of the Lord that he performs so Hezekiah can know that his prayer has not been in vain, that Isaiah's word is true to him. And God has presented this miraculous sign so Hezekiah knows of God's faithfulness. So reading a little bit more in verses 9 to 20, we actually read about Hezekiah's song after he's well from this. And it says, writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, after his illness and recovery, it said, In the prime of my life I must go down through the gates of death to be robbed of the rest of my years. I said, I will not again see the Lord, the Lord in the land of the living. No longer will I look up mankind or be with those who now dwell in this world. Like a shepherd's tent, my house has been pulled down and taken from me. Like a weaver, I have rolled up my life, and he has cut me off from the loom. Day and night you made an end of me. I waited patiently till dawn. But like a lion, he broke my bones. Day and night you made an end of me. I cried like the swift or thrush. I moaned like a moaning dove, like a morning dove. My eyes were weak, and I looked to the heavens. I am troubled, O Lord. Come to my aid. But what can I say? He has spoken to me, and in him... And he himself has done this to me. I will walk humbly all my years because of, my, of this anguish of my soul. Lord, by such things men live. My spirit finds life in them too. You restored me to health and let me live. Surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. In your love you kept me from the pit of destruction. I put all my sins from behind your back. For the grave cannot praise you. Death cannot sing your praise. Those who go down into the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. The living, the living, they praise you, as I am doing today. Fathers, tell their children about your faithfulness. The Lord will save me, and we will sing with the stringed instruments all the days of our lives in the temple of the Lord. And so here Hezekiah sings a song of praise to God. And he begins by recounting how he felt at the, at the start of uh, this um, illness he received. He recounts, his feelings of despondency, and he talks about being like a, a cloth cut from the loom. You know, in other words, he felt like what he was attached to was over, and that Hezekiah wasn't ready for the separation God was bringing upon him. But still, in verse 14, he looks to the Lord for his security. Even in the midst of those feelings of separation, likely loneliness, anger, despair, grief, whatever label you want to put on that, Hezekiah still looks to the Lord for comfort. Hezekiah's desire is to sing the praise to God. And we see that in verses 18 to 20, that these additional years Hezekiah has been promised and has received was for the simple purpose of praising the Lord. And you know, that is our purpose here, right? To bring glory to God, to praise him for what he does. It's not about being fair and life being fair or being a good person. That's not why we're here. We're here simply for the one specific reason of praising the Lord. And so we need to understand that praise is more than just what we do to bring honor to God's name, but it's demonstrating how we serve others and how we share the gospel with others and our inner attitudes with others. 
You see, I can stand up here and I can say the right words and say the right phrases and make you all feel warm and fuzzy. But if my heart is far from the Lord, those words are empty. And so we really need to make sure that when we say about praising the Lord, it's not simply just with our lips on a Sunday morning or during a song. It is the attitudes and actions of our heart day in and day out. You know, see, we've read about God's judgment upon Assyria, and they thought they were God's instrument of to this world, that God's gift to the world to be their instrument of God's judgment. That's how Assyria viewed themselves. But in truly, God says, look, because of their pride, they'll be destroyed because he wants to receive the praise that is due him. And he's not going to share that with anybody else. And so that's the purpose that Hezekiah has received from God for these 15 years was to bring more praise, more honor, more glory to the name of the Lord. Reading the last few verses of this chapter, it says this. It says, And Hezekiah, Isaiah said, Prepare a poultice of figs and apply it to the boil, and he will recover. Hezekiah had asked, What will be the sign that I will go up to the temple of the Lord? And so here we just understand that Isaiah's, or Hezekiah's illness was likely an infection, um, and they put this poultice on it to draw the infection out from him. But his final question isn't, When will I get better? It is, when can I go praise the Lord again? When can I worship God in his temple again? You see, I think Hezekiah's illness kept him from the temple so he couldn't go and worship God as he desired. And again, that was Hezekiah's goal was to worship the Lord. So as I look at this timeline, I think that this might have happened before he went and prayed to God with the Assyrian army's letter. If you remember that from last week, he placed the letter on the altar, then he prayed before the Lord saying, Lord, don't let this blasphemy against you stand. Let your name be honored. I think this is probably before that, that happened. And so we're, we've got kind of a story in a story here where this probably happened in the middle of chapter 37. It's most likely. Uh, but let's read chapter 39 and then we'll uh, move forward from there. 39 says this, and this is the last part of Hezekiah for now. It says, At that time, Merodach Baladin, son of Baladin, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters and a gift. Because he heard of his illness and recovery, Hezekiah received the envoys gladly and showed them what was in his storehouses, the silver, the gold, the spices, the fine oil, his entire armory, and everything found among his treasures. There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. And Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked, What did those men say? Where did they come from? From a distant land, Hezekiah replied, They came to me from Babylon. The prophet asked, What did they see in your palace? They saw everything in my palace. Hezekiah said, There's nothing among my treasure that I did not show them. And as they said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord Almighty. The time will come surely when everything in your everything in your palace, all that is in your father's and stored up until this time, will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. And some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood, who will be born to you, will be taken away. And they will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. The word of the Lord has spoken. I'm sorry, the word of the Lord you have spoken is good, Hezekiah replied, for he thought there will be peace and security in my lifetime. <clears throat> so here Hezekiah has recovered from his illness, and the Assyrian threat has been removed, and now enter Babylon. <clears throat> They've heard that the king was sick and was recovered, and they sent a gift and some envoys to Hezekiah. And so now he entertains him. And in my view, Hezekiah is kind of just showing off to Babylon. See, I was sick and it was looking bad, but now look how good we're doing. You know, I think he says, we're, we're showing off what I got. And he's basically saying, come see how good God is to me. Look at all the things I've gotten because of God's blessing. And so he's showing off to Babylon what he's doing. And then Isaiah shows up and kind of questions him, says, <coughs> excuse me. Basically says, why are you showing off to our enemies? <clears throat> Babylon will conquer Jerusalem, and they're going to end up with all the things you're showing them. And, worse than that, they're going to take your people captive. <clears throat> See, I don't think Hezekiah heard that last part. I think he believed that the idea of having the people of Israel serve in Babylon was simply a, an alliance, a military alliance, saying, look how wise our people want our people in their, <clears throat> in their nation to serve as advisors. But as we know, <clears throat> Hezekiah missed the warning. In about 140 years from now, Babylon's going to conquer Jerusalem and carry its, exile, its people off to exile. 
Um, but the question becomes, why would Hezekiah show off this foreign power in the first place? Why would he be so brash and share everything with them? And, and I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, saying that he's showing off to say, look what God has done for me. Um, I think that's a little consistent with his character, but I think what actually happened is Hezekiah was appearing to Babylon as a great and powerful and wealthy leader, and Babylon wasn't getting the message that Hezekiah was sharing. Babylon was trying to say, look, yeah, let's go out, basically spout land, see what all we can do, see where the weaknesses are, and then we can know how to conquer them better. Assyria tried, they failed. Babylon will do it the smart way. And Hezekiah showed them everything that God had given him. And as a result of that, showing their enemies those blessings, that then their people would be carried off into captivity here in just a little while. And so I think what that really tells me is that when God does something for us, like he did in Hezekiah's case and caused the sun to move back, and even in our own lives, we need to have some wisdom with how we share that with others. You know, we need to have some wisdom when we take our testimony and show that to others to bring glory to God and not to ourselves. And I think Hezekiah forgot that here. I think he was intent on praising God, saying, Lord, look what I've done, but he forgot that the enemy was at the gate. And so, like Hezekiah, we have a mission to honor the Lord with our lives. But not everyone that we want to share that with is going to be on our side or on his side. And so I just pray that we can have the Holy Spirit help us and direct us when those times come. So we can know how to best serve the Lord. So, Father, we thank you for today and this time together. Lord, thank you for all you do in our lives, God. Lord, we do want to be a people that blesses you. A people that honors your name. And Lord, we just thank you for who you are and how you bless us and how you look after us. So Father, just pray this week you'd go before us. God, give us wisdom as we seek to bring honor to you, God, and seek to share our testimony with others. Lord, may they know that you truly do deserve the glory and honor and praise in this world. Father, we love you and we thank you for today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as always, thanks for joining me. I'm so glad you did. Remember, until next time, that God loves you and we're a blessed people.